So we were in the middle of inverting a matrix and we need to get row reduction in the left part right here. So we're turning that into the, hopefully the identity matrix. If we're able to do it, then what we get on the right side is the inverse. So we're gonna keep going with our row operations here. So we finished column one, we're into column two. I'm gonna use the third row to knock out everything else in column two. So I'm gonna use the one instead of I could have taken the negative two, multiplied by negative one half, but that would give me a fraction right there. So I don't like fractions, let's avoid them. Plus two row three, minus two row three. So we got one, zero, three. Three, zero, negative two. And row two, zero, zero, two. Zero, <coughs> one, two. Zero, one, negative two, negative one, zero, one. All right, column two done. Let's do the row swap. So it looks in a more normal order. operation questions or any mistakes I made. Remember I'm really bad with numbers and that's pretty much all I'm doing here. All things I'm really bad at. What's that? You just the second row. So yeah, I'm pretty solid on switching rows but anything that involves addition and multiplication that's where the wheels yeah. fall off. Earlier there's an error. No. That guy? No, negative two. That guy. Yeah. Should be negative four in the next one. Two. Two, two, oh, like between, like going here to here? Yeah. Should be negative four in the next one. So negative two, add two. Yup. All right. Let's get that fixed. So that should be our negative four. I don't think. That caused too many problems. Luckily, we caught that early. The worst is when you start doing addition subtraction and then you start modifying like two or three rows start to get changed off of one mistake. That's where things go horribly wrong. All right, and we just got to finish the uh, column three. Let's, hmm, I think we're going to have to have fractions. I'm trying to avoid it, but I don't think we can avoid it. much longer. Let's just go right into fraction town. Or fraction land I call it. 103, 30, oh, negative 2, 0, 1, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, negative 2, 1, half 1. Now we'll knock out column 3. So we're going plus two row three, add that to row two, and then minus three row three, add to row one.
So we have the identity on the left. So one consequence of that is our matrix, our original matrix was row equivalent to the identity. So that means it is invertible. And the inverse is what is on the right side of this matrix. So our A inverse is this three by three matrix, nine, negative three halves, negative five, <coughs> negative five, one, three, minus two, one half, one. So how in the world can we check if this is the inverse to A? Which I have to zoom out really <coughs> far. How do I know if these two matrices are inverses? <coughs> so we're going to check by multiplying. So they are multiplicative inverses, even though we only use the word inverse, but they're multiplicative inverses. Additive inverses are super easy to find, just make everything negative. These are multiplicative inverses. So we're going to check by multiplying. Okay, so that in general multiplication takes a little while, unless it's just two by two, you can do it pretty fast, but even three by three takes a little while, especially if you got a fraction in there. Four by four, that's way less fun. So we're gonna do one more uh, inverse problem. We'll just do a two by two. But this time, we're going to have our matrix in Z3. So let's get crazy here. And we have a 2 by 2 matrix. So the way we write that is 
Z3, that's where all the entries come from, and then the dimensions are two by two. And remember Z3 has three numbers, zero, one, and two. Because three is zero, four is one, five is two, six is zero, etc. All right, our matrix is two, 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 zero. Same process. We're going to line up B with the identity matrix. I strongly recommend you do not subtract because it will make your head hurt. Just add. <coughs> Keep things positive. All right, column one. What do I do to knock out that two? You could say subtract two, but I just told you don't say subtract two. What do I add to two to make zero? One. Add one. Oh, or I could add four. So the way we're going to do it, plus two, row one. I could add one, but remember, you can't really write one half row one. There is no division either. So we can't do that. One half is not an element of Z3. So your choices are zero, one, and two, which is why I wrote them above. So we can take any, a multiple of row one, either multiply it by one or multiply it by two. Those are the two choices. So I'll do the first row operation here super carefully. All right, so two times two is four. Well, first of all, row one doesn't change, so let's just copy and paste that. Two times two is four, plus two is six, which is zero. And two times two is four, plus zero is four, but remember that's one. So four turns into one. And now two times one is two, which is two. Two times zero is zero, plus one is one. So that took care of column one. Now we're in column two. How do I knock out the upper two? What plus two is zero? One plus two is zero, of course. So I just add row two to row one. <coughs> so that'll give us three, which is zero. Now I'm adding a two to a one, which is three. And again, that's zero. And then add one to zero, which is one. Copy the second row. Hey, no fractions. Can't have fractions. Does that not make anybody else happy? I'm the only one. So this should be, oh, we're not done yet. No, no, no. What do we still have to do? How do I turn that two into a one? I can't use any subtraction. That's not gonna work. What's the only row operation I can use? What do I multiply by? And don't say a half. Two. Well, one's not gonna do anything. Multiplying by <coughs> zero is illegal. So there's only one choice left. It also happens to work. So two times two is four, which is one. Two times zero is zero. Two times zero is zero. Two times one is two. So now we have identity and on the right, we should have B inverse. So I'm just gonna rewrite our B matrix, two, 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 zero. B inverse. 0, 2, 2, 1. So we're going to check 
we should get the identity <coughs> so multiply these out make sure that you're only using numbers 0 1 and 2 when you multiply so if you get a 4 or a 3 4 5 6 7 etc turn them into a 0 1 or a 2 So you might think uh, working in modular, uh, doing modular arithmetic is crazy. It's really not. What is an example of Z12? You used arithmetic mod 12 before. I can think of, yeah, where do you use 12 numbers? Use it feet to inches. I was thinking a clock on the wall. Why would we? I don't know why we use a clock. Why is it one o'clock and not thirteen o'clock? And even if you go twenty-four hours, that's fine. The twenty-four hour clock, you're doing Z twenty-four. It's not like the twenty-fifth hour. You call it twenty-five. So this is used all the time. Let's see, minutes and hours use Z60 for whatever reason. So there's plenty of modular arithmetic out there. go into a section that I don't know is in the book, but we're going to do it anyways. If, it, if it's not in the book, I will uh, put a supplementary reference on Canvas. So this section is LU factorization. <coughs> okay. So have you heard of the word factorization before? <coughs> so what are some guesses as to what that would mean to factorize something? You heard the word factor. What do you think? Take something out of something. Take something out of something. <coughs> it's pretty good. That makes me think of the wrong operation, though. That makes me think of subtraction. So factorization is a process of figuring out if you have a product, what two multi uh, what two numbers or what two things multiply to make that up. So in this case, we're going to take a matrix and look at a way to factor it into a product of two special matrices. So let me show you a really boring way to factor something. So this is a boring factorization. A is equal to AI. 
oh wow, look, I factored a one out, or an I out in this case. So that's not terribly impressive. And of course we can factorize it the other way. So who cares? This is too easy. One thing we've done is row operations. And we saw that if we do a row operation, that's the same as multiplying by a elementary matrix. So what we're going to do is some row operations, and then some more row operations turn into the identity. And we're going to partition some of those row operations into one and some of them into another factor. So that's uh, the entire process we're going to be doing here. And we're going to be uh, diagonalizing a matrix. So let's talk about some different shape uh, matrices here. So we'll start with a upper triangle matrix. So upper triangular matrix is going to have all of its numbers in the upper right triangle. So up here will be all numbers, and then in the bottom left will be all zeros. So upper triangular matrix has zeros below the diagonal. How do I spell diagonal? There's an O in there. Is it O-N? Go now. Uh, your pen doesn't spell check for you? I have it upgraded. All right, upper triangle matrix. <coughs> now what if you have a really wide matrix? Your diagonal will run out way before you're all the way to the right. So in this case, I guess you'd call it an upper trapezoid matrix. But uh, we're going to be factoring uh, square matrices. So we won't have this situation occur right here. Normally, this would be a reduced matrix. If it was really wide, you can only get the first couple of uh, spots below the diagonal to 0. And then this would all be free right here. All these would be free variables normally. Uh, but we're not going to be doing rectangular matrices here. So we'll be doing squares only, so they will have a nice diagonal that goes uh, all the way across the matrix. So that's an upper triangle. Lower triangle matrix So you'll never guess where those numbers will be. Below the diagonal. So it's sort of the opposite. Not exactly the opposite, but the zeros are in the opposite spot. So in this case, your numbers are uh, in the lower left. And then you have all your zeros above the diagonal. Is the diagonal going to be just ones? <coughs> could be ones, not necessarily. Uh, but it could be any number, any number of numbers. But the zeros are uh, either above or below. They don't. The diagonal could be zeros or not zeros. But the zeros are in the upper case. The zeros are below the diagonal. So the diagonal could be anything, and the zeros, everything below the diagonal has to be zeros. Um, so I'll, I'll darken in the, so the diagonal can be anything. But below the diagonal has to be zeros. Or in this case, above has to be zeros. So an LU factorization, well, the letter L stands for lower triangle matrix, and the letter U stands for upper triangle matrix. So what we're going to do is factor a square matrix into a lower times an upper. That's what we're going to be doing. So LU factorization. When a matrix 
when a square matrix A can be factored as L U where get that yeah the order is correct where L is lower triangle triangle matrix I should get my triangle correct lower triangle matrix and U is upper triangle matrix I'm making my triangle match the triangle pattern in the matrix above so here what we're going to do is we're going to find L and U such that A equals L U Uh, turns out you can factorize when the matrices is uh, invertible. So if Gaussian elimination, if row reduction yields one on the diagonal, then your factorization exists. So if row reduction yields ones on the diagonal then LU factorization exists so I've taught you everything you need to know to factorize to, to LU factorization So what we're going to do is perform this now on this matrix A, 2, 1, 3, 4, negative 1, 3, negative 2, 5, 5. So I, nowhere in here did I describe the process on how to do this, but I did say you know how to do this. So any ideas on how to go about this? What does almost every problem I give you involve? Row operations. When in doubt, what's a good move? Row operations. Reduce to the identity. So make sure that you keep track of them. Let's not go all the way to the identity. Let's just get zeros in the lower left. We don't need to go all the way. Let's just get to a <coughs> lower triangle matrix. Whoa upper get to an upper triangle matrix so don't go all the way to the identity just get to upper triangle matrix so just get zeros below the diagonal And you can do two row operations at once.
So any questions on these operations getting to the lower triangle? I know you can obviously go a lot further with reduction. Very tempting to turn the twos into ones and negative three into a one, but let's just stop right here as soon as we get to that <coughs> uh, triangle matrix. All right, I'm gonna call this matrix B. Actually, we can use the right letter for it. This matrix right here, is this an upper triangle matrix? Yep, so we'll call this U for the upper triangle matrix. Now the question is, how do I get L? Wouldn't it be great if we can divide? We can't divide. One thing we could do is I could find U inverse, multiplying the right by U inverse, and then I would know L. But that takes a lot of work, doesn't it? Basically takes all the row operations we're gonna have to perform on a larger matrix and flip it around to it, and let's not do that. There's another way to get, but that is one way to get L. If you were out of ideas, but you knew A and U, you could find L by multiplying by U inverse. Of course, you have to find U inverse, then you have to multiply by it, it's a bit of a pain. There's a better way to get the matrix L. And actually, it'll come from this right here. L is going to be the product of three elementary matrices. What three matrices will it be? What row operations, if we look at what I'm writing here, <coughs> we did three row operations. So if I take U and I perform three row operations in a row, I should get back to A. We did this yesterday where we reversed our row operations in the reverse order. So we're going to start at the matrix U and write down, so I'll label this is going to be, this is really E3 inverse because we're going to do the opposite operation for E3. And then it doesn't matter the order, this will be E2 inverse and then E1 inverse. And I'm writing inverses because we're going to do the opposite of the row operation that's written on the board. So let's do that now. E3, so E3, the way we're going to get that, I'm going to perform the row operation on the identity. In this case, it'll be I3, and we're going to perform the inverse row operation. So E3, take 1, 1, 1, the identity matrix. What's the opposite row operation of adding 2, row 2 to row 3? Subtracting 2, row 2 to row 3. So take your identity, perform the opposite operation. So I'm unadding 2, row 2. So I have same two first uh, two rows and then zero negative two one so that's e3 so we just took care of e3 now we're going to go back one more step and figure out what is e2 Oops. so you're going to take again the three by three identity and I'm going to zoom in to the matrix you need to look at. <coughs> so just do the E2 operation here. What is the opposite of adding row 1 to row 3? Subtracting row 1 to row 3. So do that to your identity matrix and you have E2.
of that matrix is E2. Any questions on L matrix matrices, or this L matrix matrix? All right, last matrix, E1. We're looking at the opposite operation for E1. So what's the opposite of subtracting <coughs> two row one to row two? Add two row one to row two. So go ahead, write down the E1 matrix. You're looking at the inverse operation. So I have E3, E2, and E1 now. And the matrix <coughs> L, just looking here, L is a product E1, E2, E3. Now we are going to compute this tomorrow because we're out of time. All right, I briefly said we're going to do two row operations at the same time. We did two row operations at the same time. Does it matter? You've done enough row operations. Does it matter which of those two row operations I did first? Nope. What that means is those operations commute, meaning I can do them either order. What that means is those elementary matrices are going to commute. Most matrices don't, but if the row operations commute, then your elementary matrices will commute when they multiply. And we'll see that. That's actually true for any upper or lower triangle matrix. They'll commute.